Welcome to day three of GLF Multi-Species Focus Week. Today we will have research updates from across Ireland. Firstly, we're at the UCD research farm at Lyons Estate. Then we're off to Chagas Johnstown Castle, followed by an introduction to the new research plots at Waterford IT. All this week, we're giving you the chance to win five acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget, you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week. We're here at UCD Research Centre at Lyons Estate, where we're talking to some of the researchers working on multi-species swords in dairy and dairy captive beef systems. My name is Kate McCarthy. I'm a PhD student here at UCD Lyons Research Farm and I'm uh, part of the dairy project as part of the smart sword project. We have pretty regress, getting 250 kilos of nitrogen. We have a uh, white clover sword that got 120 last year. And then we have a six species sword that has chicory, plantain, red and white clover, ryegrass and timothy, and that's getting 90 kilos. So each of the cows zero grazed in every day. Uh, we record their intake in the box. They're milked twice daily. And then on top of that, we take uh, urine samples, faecal samples, uh, rumen samples, and, and other samples in between. So that was just the trial just gone in uh, the summer there in 2020. So hopefully we'll have preliminary data from that this coming year. There's uh, not much research being conducted in Ireland at the moment with regards to milk production. And globally, there's very few studies. In fact, uh, we actually published a meta-analysis in 2019. Uh, where we only found 11 studies that had actually reported milk production on cows fed these swords. So um, it's quite a niche area and we're quite interested in seeing the actual production effects in dairy cows. Um, our meta-analysis initially showed that the cows would produce an additional litre of milk when offered multi-species swords and so far we haven't seen major differences between treatments. So um, though they mightn't see a huge increase, we definitely haven't seen deficits in production, which was really key for us with a lot less nitrogen used to grow the swords that are being offered. My name is Shona and I'm a PhD student uh, based on UCD Lions Farm. And uh, my research involves looking at multi-species in terms of uh, their dry matter yield, uh, nutrient value and the persistency over time. Aside from the grazing study, we also have a plot study. And this plot study is looking at uh, the, same, the same treatments, grass, uh, grass clover and multi-species and it's uh, taking into account uh, the effect of rotation length uh, so 21 days and 28 days we have and then uh, also post grazing re post grazing residual so post cutting residual uh, we have set to four centimeters and six centimeters and the reason we're doing this is we want to look at the uh, the effect of uh, rotation length and uh, post grazing cutting height on the yields, uh, the nutrient value and the uh, persistency of species in these systems over time. My name is Neela Godwin. I'm a PhD student here at UCD Lions Research Farm and my PhD is looking at the impact of sword type on animal, animal performance and herbage production in a dairy calf to beef system. Here at UCD Lions Research Farm we have three eight hectare farmlets and within each farmlet we have three different sword types. So each farmlet has a different sword type. So we have perennial ryegrass, perennial ryegrass like clover, and multi-species. Our multi-species sword consists of grasses, legumes, and herbs. So we have two grasses, perennial ryegrass and timothy, and two legumes, white and red clover, and two herbs, plantain and chicory. Um, within each farmlet, there's eight hectares, and we're stocked at 2.5 livestock units to the hectare. And at the moment, we're operating a leader follower system. So we have our calves as our leaders and our steers as our followers. We also then have a pre-grazing target of between 12 and 1800 kilos of dry matter to the hectare. Anything above this, then we take out for surplus silage. Um, our post-grazing height that we graze down to in the ryegrass and ryegrass like clover swords is four centimetres and then six centimetres for our multi-species swords. This is the first year of a three-year experimental system and the results to date have shown very promising results in favour of the multi-species swords. So we saw some of the systems research going on at UCD and now we're going to go to Chagas in Johnstown Castle to see some of the environmental work that's going on at the minute. Hello, my name is Gira. I'm doing a PhD in Chagas in Johnstown Castle in the southeast of Ireland and I'm looking at the effect of mixed species on the agronomic results, so the yield and the nitrogen use efficiency. Here in Johnstown Castle, we set experiments to look at the effects of the mixed species and what was happening when droughts occurred. And also we looked at several rates of nitrogen fertilizer. So we compare the mixed species at lower fertilizer rates to ryegrass with high fertilizer rates that acts like a comparison to what is the standard practice in Ireland. What our results were, was that the multi-species grasslands were more productive than the monocultures 
any type of monoculture and that the multi-species were also more resistant to drought. So we had the multi-species during the drought periods who were yielding more than the monocultures who were not having the drought. So at the end of the year, we achieved higher yields in difficult conditions with the mixed species than the favorable conditions for the monocultures. But we also had other results that we didn't really expect it. It was that the weed didn't invade the multi-species swords. So we conclude that it was because of the complementarity between the species, having broad leaves, herbs, having the, uh, you say the crawling, having the crawling white clover and the well covering ryegrass. Combined together, they were not leaving any space for the weeds. So we had very low weed infestation. And that's the thing that came out because people could say that we cannot grow legume on its own. We cannot grow grass on its own without having post-emergent spray or this kind of stuff. But with mixed species, we had no post-emergent spray because you cannot spray because there are broad leaves. But we still didn't have weed infestation. My name is Sierra Collins. I'm a technologist here at Chagas Johnstown Castle County Wexford and I'm working on nitrous oxide emissions from multi-species swords. As part of my PhD project, I monitored nitrous oxide emissions uh, from the Johnstown Castle multi-species swords uh, field trial. This project is in collaboration with the University of Reading and Rothamsted Research in Devon in the UK. Nitrous oxide, our N2O, is a powerful greenhouse gas with 300 times the global warming potential of CO2. And it has a very long atmos atmospheric persistence of over 100 years. One of the main sources of nitrous oxide is nitrogen fertilizer land application. A number of reasons why multi-species swords might affect nitrous oxide emissions. So clovers promote nitrogen fixation and this reduces fertilizer dependence. Um, increased resource use efficiency and there's been research into compounds within the plantain plant which stabilizes nitrogen within the soil system and this reduces uh, the potential for loss to the environment. And one of our key findings was that the nitrous oxide emissions per unit dry matter or nitrogen yield from the six species mixture receiving 150 kgs N per year was lower than uh, perennial ryegrass is receiving both 150 kgs and 300 kgs of nitrogen per year. This is an important finding as this means that we may be able to maintain productivity while reducing nitrous oxide emissions to the environment. That was a great insight from Johnstown Castle on the potential benefits of multi-species swords for the environment. Finally, we're going to go to Mike Welsh and Waterford IT for a look at the new research plot set up at Carriganore. I'm Mike Welsh, I'm lecturing in sustainable water management, sustainable livestock management and land management in WIT. On the trial plots that we've established here, as you can see, uh, we're introducing regenerative forage production systems. And what that entails is that we're looking at a range of multi-species mixtures that we know from research can outperform our traditional monocultures. Overall, we have six different species mixtures across the entire plot. So we'll have 1,400 plots of one meter wide by five meters in length. So it gives us plenty of scope for multiple research projects running simultaneously. We've already started some from when we planted it and as soon as it came through, uh, we're looking at seed inoculants for some of the area, a soil inoculant, and we're pairing that against chemical nitrogen as per the normal ryegrass monoculture recommendations. On our actual trial plots here, if you look down the plots, we split it into two main areas. The, the area to your left here, uh, as you're looking out, is a normal tilly system where we went in, sprayed off the ground, plowed it, cultivated and got in our species mixtures. Our other side here, <clears throat> it's exactly the same area, same um, approach, same replicates of, of species mixtures, but this is our no-till area at this side. So we sprayed it off, we subsoiled it because there's silage harvested from this area for quite a long time and there's a lot of compaction. 
So the ploughing, the tillage got rid of the compaction on, on the tillage side. Here at this side, we use a subsilo. And then went in directly and see that there was no other cultivation, just direct seed on top of. Here in this first plot that we're standing on is uh, what I term a winter hardy mix. We have Westerwald ryegrass and with Timothy in there also, and there's clovers, red clovers. This next row here is what we term, um, it's our legume species and there's two red clovers and two white clovers and this is a, a legume monoculture. This next trial area here uh, is half the width of this. It, it, uh, it's a four species mix and we have two legumes and two grasses in, in this mix. There's Timothy, ryegrass and red clovers. The other half of this section here is an eight species mix and in that we have ryegrasses, fescues, timothy and white clover mainly. This plot here is our multi-species mix. There's 15 different plants here all together. We have a mixture of grasses which consists of ryegrasses, um, fescues and again we have timothy and, uh, and then we have seven legume species in there and then on the herbs we have See, the shikri is a very obvious plantain, sheep sorrel, yarrow, sheep spurnet, sand fine, total of 15 species. This is our final plot here, and this is our ryegrass monoculture. It's a normal uh, silage mix, and we're then back into our winter hardy species again, and the same replicate over again. The forages that we're producing here when they're harvested. We'll take them over to the livestock farm and then we can look again at the different treatments and the different species mixtures and see how they perform in the actual livestock performance in meat production or weight gain. There is a growing international interest in multi-species or more, more environmentally friendly production systems and we've already, since, even since the beginning, since day one in this, we have companies from outside of Ireland that are already participating with us in the project here. And that interest is growing and growing all the time. Thanks to all of our contributors today. It'll be interesting to see how the results of this work and how we can apply it on farm to make our systems more sustainable. Join us tomorrow where we'll see how Kevin and Carl are managing their multi-species swords. The DLF Six Species Herbal Lay is a good all-round mixture that should do well on a broad range of soil types, but of course you can contact us directly and we can formulate a mixture specific to your soil. All this week we are giving you the chance to win 5 acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week.